welcome to the semi-finals of the 2024 edition of the National Science and Math Quiz. This is the last of the semi-final contest, and it features St. Augustine's College, <laughs> Wesley Girls High School, National College. I would like to remind you that we have the Gold Super Bonanza still at stake in the final round of competition. If the schools solve all four riddles, a school that solves all four riddles gets 2,400 Ghana CDs. If they solve three out of the four, they get 2,000 Ghana CDs. If they solve two out of the four, they get 1,200 Ghana CDs. And if they solve even one riddle, they get 600 Ghana CDs. We are grateful to Gold PLC for the Gold Super Bonanza. Before we meet the contestants, I would like to acknowledge our sponsors. The National Science and Math Quiz is proudly sponsored by the Ghana Education Service in partnership with Gold PLC and supported by Joy News, Pep Student, Jupe Money Transfer, Prudential Life Insurance Ghana, Beta Malt, ALX, Kivo, Bell Beverages, Flora Tissues, Coronation Insurance, Accra College of Medicine, University of Mines and Technology, Academic City University College, PMMC Jewelry, GTP, CHAS, YFM, and Girl Mark Foundation. My name is Elsie Fakhoffman. I'm the Dean of the School of Engineering Sciences at the University of Ghana, and I'm honored to be your quiz mistress. <laughs> of course, this is a... Uh... Thank you. Now let's meet the contestants. St. Augustine's College is represented by Otu Alexander. You're welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. How are you? Good. All through the semi finals, I've been finding out about contestants. Beyond doing national science and math quiz, what do you do? In my free time. I like to play chess. Okay, good. But in my free time, I like to watch anime, animated movies. I see. Good. And how has the National Science and Math Quiz been for you in terms of uh, building you up as students? Uh, NSMQ has helped me to learn teamwork, not to trust, not in myself, but in someone else too. All right, that's good. And you? The NSNQ has really helped me in the way that it has helped me to widen up my scope of knowledge, as well as also collaborate with other people during the activities involving like groups, like groups related activities. That's wonderful. So this contest, what are we to expect from you? The same as always, Giovanni C. God is our banner and we take us to all right, I wish you well. <laughs> Wesley Girls High School is represented by Amperi Mamea. <laughs> Jessica Stamwata, final year. You're welcome, ladies. How are you today? I'm blessed and highly favored. Wonderful. You heard me. Yes, please. I'd like to know a little more about you. When you are not doing National Science and Math Quiz, what do you do? Well, I like to listen to music, and I also like to engage in team sports such as football and basketball. All right, that's nice. I like, I like to sing and read novels. Sing? Yes, please. Oh, wow. Okay, that's wonderful. Um, National Science and Math Quiz. What are some of the benefits, in your opinion? Well, 
it actually broadens your scope of knowledge because you realize that there's more to life than what you just see. Mm-hmm. All right. And you? It has made me a stronger person and more confident. Okay, that's good. And this podcast, what are we expecting from you? With God being our helper, you should expect excellent results. All right. I wish you well. Thank you. National College is represented by Darius Efriye Ajiman Prempe. Esuman. You are most welcome, gentlemen. Thank you very much. How are you? Yeah, fine. Great. So I'm learning about contestants. Beyond the National Science and Math Quiz, what do you, the two of you do? Thank you, madam. Um, I, I like to sing and also to listen to music a lot because I believe music is good for the soul. Yes, that's what I mean. All right. And you? I also like to sing very well. I like to sing. Sing. Hey, we can form a band on this stage. There's a singer over there as well. All right. Good. And what are the benefits, in your opinion, of the National Science and Math Quiz? Okay, I, I believe that the, the, the benefits are immeasurable because um, th- this quiz gave me a purpose in SHS because if I, if I didn't do this, I don't know what I would have done with my life okay. in SHS. So it, it gave me a purpose. And then it, it has also helped me to be vocal, to know how to speak in public. All right. And you? Um, this team has given the confidence to face um, any challenge that is shown to me. It has opened, also opened my eyes to see the broader picture of the world out there, and I'm really grateful. Okay, that's good. I wish you the very best. Mm-hmm. Answer your major question correctly, three points. If the question is incorrectly answered, it becomes available to the two remaining schools. A school may ring and attempt an answer. If right, one bonus point. If the answer is incorrect, there's a penalty, one point. For questions which require calculations, you have 30 seconds in which to present an answer. If there are no calculations, you have 10 seconds to do so. Ladies and gentlemen, please answer all questions in one attempt. Best wishes to all three schools. Hmm. This first set of questions will require 30 seconds of your time. And I have one of those where the question is common to all of you. I move around gathering right answers. But you need to pay attention because I'm expecting two different things. So pay close attention to the question so that you answer appropriately. I'll start with you, Ghana National College, but listen to the question first. Water is commonly used in vehicles as a coolant. State and explain one major property of water that makes this possible, and then give one major reason why the use of pure water as a coolant in vehicles is not advisable. Please, have you understood it? All right. Water is commonly used in vehicles as a coolant. You are to state and explain one major property of water that makes this possible, and then also give one major reason why the use of pure water as a coolant in vehicles is not advisable. I'm starting with you, Ghana National College. Yes, Darius. Okay. So one property of water, which makes it a a good vehicle coolant, is that it has a high specific heat capacity, which, which makes it absorb a high amount of heat and change its its temperature relatively um, at a lower rate 
since it has a high specific heat capacity. And one reason why it is pure water is not, um, it's not advisable to be used as a coolant is that pure water can dissolve most um, substances since it is a universal solvent and hence it, it may dissolve some salts or substances in the parts of the, the vehicle where it is used as the coolant and reduce the efficiency of the vehicle. Two. Mamiya, one of the reasons why water is used is because of the high specific latent heat of vaporization of water. And this property of water suggests that high amounts of heat would be needed to convert what to convert liquid water into its vapor form, hence enabling the water to absorb more heat before it is changed into a vapor. And as it is changed into a vapor, it enables, it enables heat loss, thus cooling the engine down. And one reason why pure water cannot, is, not advised to, is not advised to be used as a coolant is because pure water Pure water contains contains no, contains no impurities, and these impurities can serve as can provide larger surface areas for the engine. So, and these these the lack of impurities in the water. Affects, affects the cooling effects of the water such that, they are abs such that the absence of the impurities in the water can sometimes reduce the cooling ability of water. Have you finally finished? Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> Two out of three. St. Augustine's College. Yes, Alexander. Water is used as a coolant in vehicles. One reason being its high boiling point. That's its relative high boiling point, which is 100 degrees Celsius at, ST, at standard conditions. And one way this helps is because as the heat is being supplied to the engine, because of its high boiling point, it can absorb more of this heat and help in cooling before it finally boils and becomes vaporized or became, becomes gaseous. Hence, the high boiling point of water will help it being used as a coolant. And one reason why it is not advisable to be used is due to its anomalous expansion. That is, at low temperatures, it, its expansion deviates from the norm, where increasing the temperature normally increases the volume, but then it can rather decrease the volume, which can cause cracking, cracking in some automobile engines due to its anomalous expansion. Finish? Yes. No. <laughs> All right, so let me share with you what these are. The properties that make water a, go a good option as a coolant. First one, high specific heat capacity that was given. It can absorb and release a large amount of heat without significant temperature changes. High latent heat of vaporization. It absorbs a large amount of heat when it evaporates. And then the third one is high thermal conductivity. Water is a good conductor of heat that's allowing it to efficiently transfer heat from the engine to the radiator. Okay, so that was the third one that I was expecting from you. All right, now the disadvantages. First one is that there is a risk of corrosion. 
you have to agree, there's a risk of corrosion. Water can dissolve oxygen, leading to oxidation of metal components in the engine. Next then, it has a low boiling point, not a high boiling point, in, in terms of this application, right? It has a low boiling point. Water's boiling point of 100 degrees Celsius is too low for high-performance engines, hence loss of water readily through evaporation, okay? And then water has a relatively high freezing point, zero degrees Celsius, meaning it can freeze in cold temperatures. So you see in the temperate zones, they really will not be using water at all as a coolant, right? Okay. So these were what I was expecting. None of you got the disadvantages. And two of you, you got two of, two of the properties. And then unfortunately, I couldn't give you anything. Okay, so actually, what would be a better option is this uh, uh, using of antifreeze, right? So they use antifreeze, and uh, it's normally made of 95 to 97 percent propylene alcohol or ethylene glycol, uh, propylene glycol or ethylene glycol, and then it will also have three to five percent water. It also has corrosion inhibitors, pH buffer, and some dye, and. That goes around the problem of uh, the disadvantages that I just mentioned to you, okay? So that's why they use the antifreeze as opposed to using pure water as a coolant in the vehicle. Please, did you learn something? Okay, great. Next, 10 seconds with a preamble to all schools. Preamble. Imagine that there are two alleles, big R and small r for a given gene. Big R is dominant to small r. Please answer the given questions about the gene. I hope you got it. All right. So Ghana National, which genotype or genotypes expresses or express the dominant big R phenotype? Explain your answer. Yes, Darius. Okay. So the genotypes are capital R, small r, and capital R, capital R. This is because since the capital R allele is dominant over the small r allele, its presence in the genotype will mask the effect of the small r allele, and hence it's the Phenotype that will be observed is the dominant phenotype, which is as a result of the presence of the capital R allele. All right. With a turn preamble. Are big R and small R on different loci? Why or why not? Mamiya. So the alleles big R and small r are not on different loci, but rather are located on the same locus. And this is because both big R and small r represent two different, two different alternative forms of the same gene. Hence, they cannot be located on different loci. Yes. St. Augustine's with the same preamble. Where are big R and small r located? And why can they not be on the same exact chromosome? Yes, Alexander. They are located on sister chromatids, and they cannot be located on the same chromosome because the big R and small r, which are alternate forms of a gene, that is alleles, must occupy the same locus on these two chromatids. Hence, they cannot occupy the same locus on a single chromosome because because they have to be on the same locus, they can't occupy the same position 
on one chromosome, but they have to be on two sister chromatids at the same locus on these two sister chromatids. All right, I'll let you have that. <laughs> All right. Next set, 30 seconds with a preamble to all schools. Preamble. Rutherford scattering experiments are conducted with 5.0 mega electron volts alpha particles and various target foils. Find the distance of closest approach of the alpha particle for the given target nucleus, assumed fixed in space. I hope you got your preamble. All right. So, Ghana National, iron. Yes, Darius. Okay, so we have 1.1 1 .1 by 10 raised to the power negative 4 meters. That's incorrect for a bonus. <laughs> All right, I'll hold on to your answer for now. With the same preamble, Wesley Girls. Aluminium. Mami, yeah. Three point zero times. 10 raised to an exponent of negative 14 meters. That's incorrect for a bonus. All right, I'll come back to you. St. Augustine's with the same preamble, copper. Yes, upon. So the closest, the closest distance of approach is 1.2 by 10 raised to an exponent of negative 6 meters. That's incorrect for bonus. All right. So, Ghana National, your answer was 15 femtometers. Uh, Wesley Girls, yours was 7.5 femtometers. And St. Augustine's, yours was 17 femtometers. Next set, 30 seconds, with a preamble to all schools. Please listen carefully. Find the equation of a quadratic curve in the form y is equal to a multiplying the expression x minus h this expression squared plus k with a stationary point at you need to hear it again okay find the equation of a quadratic curve in the form y is equal to a multiplying the expression x minus h, this expression squared, plus k, with a stationary point at Ghana National, a with coordinates 1, 2, and y-intercept 
5. Darius. Okay, so we have y is equal to 3 multiplying an expression in bracket x minus 1. That expression squared plus 2. You are right. <laughs> West Lagos with the same preamble. B has coordinates negative 1, 3, and Y intercept at negative 3. Yes, Hasada. Y is equal to negative 6. Multiplying an expression in brackets, which is x plus 1, this expression is squared, and all this plus 3. You are right. <laughs> With the same preamble, St. Augustine, C has coordinates 2, negative 5, and Y intercept 3. Upon y. y is y is equal to two multiplying an expression in the bracket x minus two that expression squared minus five. You are right. seconds with a preamble to all schools. Preamble, please listen carefully. In organic chemistry, functional group tests are fundamental tools providing valuable information about the structure, reactivity, and potential applications of organic compounds. Suggest which of the following tests may be the most appropriate in distinguishing between the given pair of compounds. And I have five types of tests. Tollens test, bromine water test, Lucas's test, iodoform slash triiodomethane test, ferric chloride slash iron three chloride test, and Ferlin's test. I hope you got that. Okay, so in organic chemistry, functional group tests are fundamental tools providing valuable information about the structure, reactivity, and potential applications of organic compounds. When I get to you, I will give you a pair of compounds. Please suggest which of the tests may be most appropriate. My key words are most appropriate in distinguishing between the given pair of compounds. And then I have a list of five types of tests. The five types of tests are Tollens test, that's one. Two, bromine, in brackets, water test, bromine water test. The third one is Lucas's test. The fourth one is iodoform slash triiodomethane test. And the fifth one, hey, how many is that? <laughs> One, two, three. Yes, the fourth one is ferric chloride or iron three chloride test. And the fifth one is Ferlin's test. Mm, so there are five different tests. So tell me which is the most appropriate. 
when I give you your two compounds. Okay, so Ghana National College, 3 hexene and hexane. Yes, there else. The bromine water test. You are right. <laughs> Wesley Grouse with the same preamble. Octanal and three hexanoon. Mamiya, Tollins test. Okay, two out of three. I'll tell you the reason later. St. Augustine's two pentanoon and three pentanoon. Upon. So, it is the. the are you do form test and the ferric chloride test? Two out of three. <laughs> the reason why you are getting two is that you got penalized for adding an extra one. Okay, so it's iodoform or the triiodomethane test. That's it. And then Wesley girls, there are two possibilities. You gave me one of them, right? So the Tollens test or Fellens test. Okay. All right, next set, 10 seconds. Ghana National. The presence of a protein such as albumin in the urine of an individual is an indication of kidney damage. Please explain why the protein gets into the urine. Yes, Darius. Okay. So, this is because during ultrafiltration in the glomerulus into the Bowman's capsule, Proteins, proteins or amino acids um, uh, and a protein such as albumin is too large to pass through the glomerulus and enter the Bowman's capsule and hence if found if albumin is found in the urine it means that the glomerulus is, has become too porous, and hence um, there is a damage to the um, the the glomerulus and the Bowman's um, the Bowman's capsule, which allows the albumin to. Uh, be filtered into the blood and to, to be filtered into the kidney nephron and to enter the urine. Two. Uh, you can summarize all of the things that you said by saying that, okay, or maybe I should just be quiet and come back. It doesn't change anything. Anyway. So the glomerular capillaries have been damaged. That's why they've become leaky, and they are leaking. They are allowing the proteins to pass through. So damage to the capillaries in the glomerulus. That's the summary, isn't it? OK. All right. Wesley girls, give three, three examples of conditions in humans caused by frame shift mutations. Yes, mommy, yeah. So we have Wilson's disease, Menke's disease, and also the Prady-Willi syndrome. 
Mm. <laughs> um, hmm. I'm not recognizing any of those. For a bonus. Okay. Fragile X syndrome, sickle cell anemia, Tay Sachs disease, cystic fibrosis, Crohn's disease, Charcot Marie Tooth disease, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. These are the common ones. Huh? Okay, anyway. All right, St. Augustine's. Apart from the elimination of waste products, give three functions of the urinary system. Yes, Alexander. One of the functions is to regulate blood pressure. Another function is for osmoregulation, that is to conserve water and keep water in the body. And a third, a third function is blood production. That is, the kidneys can secrete some enzymes which can stimulate that's erythropoietin, which can stimulate the formation of red blood cells. Mm. I'll give you two out of three. Okay, controlling blood pressure, that one was a clear one. The other ones, maintaining homeostasis of mineral ions in extracellular fluid, regulating acid-base balance in the blood, regulating the volume of extracellular fl fluids. This is the one that I gave you the extra for because we are talking about fluids, right? Uh -huh. Although you didn't mention extracellular, but you were close enough. So I'm giving you for the blood pressure and then uh, volume of fluids. Okay? All right. Next set, 30 seconds with a preamble to all schools. Preamble. A block A on a smooth horizontal table is connected by a light inextensible string running over a smooth pulley to a block B, which hangs vertically from the other end of the string. Did you get the preamble? Okay. A block A on a smooth horizontal table is connected by a light inextensible string running over a smooth pulley to a block B, which hangs vertically from the other end of the string. Okay, so now, Ghana National College. Find the tension in the string if the mass of block A is 3.2 kilogram and the mass of block B is 4.8 kilogram. Darius. So we have nineteen Newtons. You are right. <laughs> With the same preamble, Wesley Girls, find the magnitude of the acceleration of block A. If its mass is 1.6 kilogram and the mass of block B is 2.4 kilogram. Yes, Asada. You are right. With the same preamble, St. Augustine's, find 
the magnitude of the acceleration of block B, if its mass is 4.8 kilogram and the mass of block A is 2.4 kilogram. Yes, Alexander. Six point five meters per second squared. You are right. <laughs> Next set, thirty seconds with a preamble to all schools. Preamble. Find the terms. U subscript 3, U subscript 4, and U subscript 5 of the sequence U subscript N defined by the given recurrence relation. Did you get your preamble? Okay, good. So now, um, Ghana National College, U subscript of the expression n plus 2 is equal to 3 multiplying U subscript of the expression n plus 1 minus 4 U subscript n, with U subscript 1 equals 3 and U subscript 2 equals 5. Darius. Okay. U, U subscript 3 is equal to 3. 3. And U, U subscript, subscript 4 11. is equal to negative 11. negative 11. And U subscript 5 is equal to negative 45. 45. You are right. <laughs> West Lagos with the same preamble. U subscript of the expression n plus 2 is equal to 2 multiplying u subscript the expression n plus 1 plus 3 multiplying u subscript n with u subscript 1 equals negative 5, and u subscript 2 equals 5. Mamiya. U subscript 3 is equal to negative 5. U subscript 4 is equal to 5. U subscript 5 is equal to negative 5. You are right. <laughs> With the same preamble. U, subscript of the expression n plus 2, is equal to 4 multiplying U, subscript of the expression n plus 1, minus 5 multiplying U, subscript n, with U, subscript 1 equals 2, and U, subscript 2 equals 3. Alexander. U subscript 3 equals 2. U subscript 4 equals negative 7. 
and u subscript 5 equals negative 38. You are right. All right, so for this next set, I'm giving you 30 seconds of time. And I have a preamble to all schools. Preamble. Redox reactions have numerous applications across various fields, including energy production, industrial processes, and environmental chemistry. You will be given a redox reaction. Give a balanced equation of the reaction. Where relevant, assume the reaction takes place in an acidic medium. I hope you got that. Wonderful. So, Ghana National, H2S plus HNO3 going to NO plus S. Darius. We have three H two S plus H N O three plus eight H plus going into 3S plus 2NO plus 4H2O. I am not accepting it. Yes. Mamiya. The equation is given by 3S with a charge of 2 minus, plus 2NO3, with a charge of minus, plus 8H plus. All this going into 3S plus 2NO plus 4H2O. I'm not accepting that as well. All right, I'll come back to it. Your major question with the same preamble. SO2 plus ClO3 minus going to Cl minus plus SO42 minus. Yes, Asada. The equation is the equation is um, the, the equation is ClO3, which has a charge of minus this plus three SO2, and this plus two H with a charge of Plus, this is going into Cl with a charge of minus this plus SO4 with a charge of 2 minus this plus H2O. I'm not accepting it. Yes, go ahead. So we have yes. three... H2O plus 3SO2 plus ClO3 minus going into 3SO4 2 minus plus Cl minus plus 
Six H plus. You are right. <laughs> Saint Augustine. With the same preamble. I2 plus NO3 minus going to IO3 minus plus NO2. Yes, upon. So the equation is I2 plus 10NO3 minus and then plus 8H plus going into 2i o 3 minus plus 10 n o 2 plus 4 h 2 o you are right okay so the first one the first one the balanced equation is 3H2S plus 2HNO3 going to 2NO plus 3S plus 4H2O. All right, so I've come to one of those questions where I'm going to be moving around for right answers. So some single question to all of you. And then I come to you for a right answer different from what has already been said. Okay, so this is the question. Mention one, only one, of the four types of bone cells and state its function. I hope you got that. So, uh, first choice, Ghana National College. Darius. We have the osteoblasts. And these, these cells are responsible for the production of new bone tissue matrix, which is which forms new bone tissue and leads to um, the, the growth of the bone. the bone. Okay, I'll accept it. <laughs> Girls High School, same question. Yes, Mamiya. Yeah. We have osteoclasts, and these bone cells are responsible for the breakdown of older, worn out bone, older, worn out mature bone cells, and they are also responsible for the reabsorption of calcium back into the bone matrix. Okay. Alexander. So, osteopogenital cells. And these cells are the stem cells that divide to produce the other three bone cells. That is the osteoblasts, the osteoclasts, and the osteocytes in the bone. Okay. You, you've mentioned all of them anyway, so... <laughs> I don't need to belabor the point. All right, next set, 30 seconds with a preamble to all schools. Preamble, find the minimum photon energy in mega electron volts required to produce Ghana National College. A proton-antiproton pair given the proton mass as 1.673 times 10 raised to the power negative 27 kilogram.
Darius. Okay. So we have one point five six six mega electron volts. That's incorrect for a bonus. All right, I'll come back to it. With the same preamble, Wesley Girls, a neutron anti neutron pair giving the neutron mass as 1.675 times 10 raised to the power negative 27 kilogram. Yes, mommy, yeah. Okay. The energy is given by nine point four three seven mega electron volts. That's incorrect for a bonus. Okay, I'll come back. St. Augustine's, a muon anti muon pair giving the muon mass as 1.884 times 10 raised to the power negative 28 kilogram. Upon. So it is two point three four five by ten raised to an exponent of of three. Mega electron volts. That's incorrect for bonus. <laughs> All right. So, Ghana National College, yours was 1,877 mega electron volts. Wesley Girls High School, yours was. 1.880 times 10 to the power 3 mega electron volts. I was willing to accept 1,879 mega electron volts. And then uh, St. Augustine's, yours was 211.4 mega electron volts. All right. Last set of questions for the round 30 seconds with a short preamble. Find the equation of a cubic curve whose gradient dy dx is 3x squared minus 2ax plus b with, I hope you got it, or again, find the equation of a cubic curve whose gradient dy dx equals 3x squared minus 2ax plus b with, all right, so Ghana National College, a point of inflection at a with coordinates 1, 5, and passing through the point b with coordinates 0, negative 7.
Darius. Okay. The equation is y is, is equal to ahead, go ahead, go ahead. x cubed minus, minus 3, three x, squared. x squared plus, plus 14x minus, minus 7. seven. You are right. <laughs> With the same preamble, Wesley Girls, a point of inflection at A with coordinates negative 1, 6, and passing through the point B with coordinates 0, 8. Is that hand up, Mami? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Y is equal to X cubed plus 3X squared plus 4X plus 8. You are right. <laughs> Last question of the round with the same preamble, St. Augustine's. A point of inflection at A which has coordinates 1, negative 7, and passing through the point B with coordinates 0, 7. Yes, upon. Y is equal to X cube minus 3X squared minus 12X plus 7. You are right. And that's the end of the first round. that you don't like generosity, any of you? Huh? Because in the heat of answering, you say a lot of things. Some of you talk for a while. As you are talking, you are saying things you shouldn't be saying. But I pick out the positive parts of what you are saying and award you marks. Usually, sometimes I even give you four marks if you say the salient things. Sometimes I give you partial credit. But if you don't appreciate any of that, trust me, things will be different. No generosity in the future. But let, let's see. The first one, the first protest, is from Wesley Girls High School. They are protesting um, the question, the third set of biology questions. Mention one of the four types of bone cells and state its functions. All right. So they are protesting the answer from St. Augustine's. Yes. So they decided to go for osteoprogenitor cells, also known as osteogenic cells, right? And 
They say they develop into other bone cells such as osteoclasts and osteoblasts. Our concern is that the osteoprogenitor cells only develop into osteoblasts. Osteoclasts are macrophages and hence do not originate from the osteoprogenitor cells. Okay. The mistake was, first after mentioning, which by the way carries most of the marks, just mentioning carries the two marks, and then they are to go ahead and talk about uh, the function, right? All you had to do was say form new cells. You didn't have to give even the details. You decided to go extra. I decided to ignore because you said form new cells and went ahead to produce all kinds of things. I decided to give you the mark and somebody is now protesting. I will still give you the mark because I, I am generous. Because you will find out that they also benefit eventually. Uh, eventually, they also benefit. So it all cancels out to the same thing. So no, this protest, I'm not upholding it. All right. Yes. Then the next one. This is a chemistry question. The protest, again, is coming from Wesley Girls High School. <laughs> Okay, so uh, they tried the bonus, right? I think it was a question that went to uh, Ghana National College. Please listen to this. The redox reactions have numerous applications and so on. You'll be given a redox reaction. Give a balanced equation of the reaction where relevant, assume the reaction takes place in an acidic medium. It was H2S plus HNO3 going to NO plus S. And I said the answer is 3H2S plus 2HNO3 going to 2NO plus 3S plus 4H2O. They gave an answer. 3S2 minus plus 2NO3 minus plus 8H plus going to 3S plus 2NO plus 4H2O in the ionic form using ion electron method. Please, if you are looking at this question, the compounds were not given in ionic form. If you look, if we wanted to give in ionic form, we would have done so. Because look at the question that came to you. Your own question was in ionic form, was it not? This first one was not in ionic form. So where from the ionic answer? Huh? So the Compounds were not given in ionic form, so the answer should be in the state the compounds are found. No credit for this one. The protest is not upheld. All right, the next protest. This one comes from Ghana National College. <laughs> you, you see what I mean? That's my generosity. Hmm. Anyway. <laughs> All right. So what was your problem? Um, the answer given by Ghana National College is the same as the answer given by the quiz mistress. Are you sure? Glomerular capillaries form the glomerulus. Damage to the capillaries is the same as damage to the glomerulus. Are you sure? No. You did not mention capillaries. The capillaries were the key aspect to this. It is not the structure of the glomerulus that I was concerned about. I was concerned about the function of the capillaries that form the glomerulus, and so I was not going to uphold this one. In fact, consultant says my allocation was fair. Hmm? You got partial credit, and you are not satisfied. You want full credit. You will not get it. Not today, not tomorrow. <laughs> Your protest is not upheld. Be, be grateful for, for my generosity. All right. Next one. This
first one came from St. Augustine's College. <laughs> Who is it going in favor of right now? The people that have not brought enough, be, please be feeling yours. Okay. So this one uh, it says, apart from the elimination of waste products, give... Oh, okay, yes, I, I, yes. The question that went to you... <laughs> the question that went to you was, apart from elimination of waste products, give three functions of the urinary system. And then I gave the answers as maintaining homeostasis of mineral ions in extracellular fluid, regulating acid-base balance in the blood, regulating the volume of extracellular fluids, controlling blood pressure. In fact, you had a controlling blood pressure. The regulating volume of extracellular fluids, you just mentioned fluids, you didn't even mention extracellular. I decided to give you anyway. And you are still unhappy. Because, what did you say? Uh, the kidney, which is not part of the urinary system, produces... Which, which is a part of the urinary system. So now they want to move to kidney. Which is part of the urinary system, produces erythropoietin, which stimulates the production of red blood cells. That is hematopoiesis. Really. Now, this is from consultant. Hemo Hematopoiesis is the formation of blood cellular components during embryonic development and throughout adulthood to replenish blood components. It is out of context in what is being asked here. Do you want me to withdraw my point for the fluid? Shall I withdraw the point? <laughs> so, unfortunately, this protest is also not upheld. All right, next one. Oh, yeah, I have plenty, huh? This one came from Ghana National College. Again, biology, the first set of biology questions. Hmm. So there was, it started with a preamble. Imagine that there are two alleles, big R and small r, for a given gene. Big R is dominant to small r. They were to answer the questions about the gene. So uh, what was their problem? Let me see. Oh, they are worried about the answer from St. Augustine's. <laughs> okay. So, the question that went to St. Augustine's was, where are the big R and small R located, and why can they not be on the same exact chromosomes? Remember, there were two parts. Did I give you full credit for your answer? I did. Again, generosity, oh. you see. Too much generosity. I gave, no, I gave you two. Please, how many did I give them? I gave them four marks. Generosity. Okay, so they were supposed to do multiple things. The marks I gave were for cannot occupy the same locus. And the problem that uh, Ghana National has is that they were not mentioning chromosomes, they were rather mentioning chromatids. Uh, okay, consultant. Okay. Oh, well. So consultant says I should give them two.
Okay, so they get the two points that they cannot occupy the same um, locus, right? They cannot be on the same exact chromosome. And where are they located? They were mentioning chromatids. Okay, two. So deduct one point. Okay. So we are deducting a point for mentioning chromatids rather than chromosomes. Okay? All right. I think that's the end of it. My big pile of protests. All right. Or more. All right. So that's the end. Did you deduct the Today's contest is like Kingdom Filipino Fighter. The stage is set. The West Negros High School has 21 points. St. <laughs> Augustine's College has 24 points. <laughs> Ghana National College has 26 points. have a very long way to go. Four more rounds. Round two. In this round, we have the Prudential Life Speed Race. The speed race is sponsored by Prudential Life Insurance Ghana for every life, for every future. In this round, I'm going to be presenting you with the same question. For an opportunity to answer, you must ring for the question. May I hear your bell, Ghana National? Thank you. Wesley Girls. Thank you. And St. Augustine. If you ring and answer correctly and it's the first attempt at the question, three points. If it's the second attempt, two points. And if it's the third attempt, one point. But you have to be mindful that uh, if you attempt to answer a question and you are unsuccessful, you will lose a precious point. In fact, once you are given an opportunity to answer, you have three seconds in which to provide that answer. If you dilly-dally, you start repeating the question, you start saying, we have, madame, any of the things that you use to, <laughs> to waste time. At the end of the three seconds, you will hear the bell. Once you hear the bell, Whatever it is you are saying, that's your answer. And it's likely to fetch the penalty. So please get straight to the point. Just the answer. All right? Okay. For questions which require calculations, you have 30 seconds. And for questions which do not require calculations, you have 10 seconds. Best wishes to all three schools. First set of questions, 10 seconds each. A group of biology students on a field trip came across an organism which they tried to classify as either reptile or amphibian. They agreed that the organism was an amphibian because it possessed a very moist, moist thin skin which is a defining characteristic of amphibians. What is the purpose of this defining characteristic? Yes, Darius. Okay. The purpose of the moist, thin skin of amphibians is to allow easy diffusion of gases over the skin of the amphibians, since they can live in, uh, in aquatic habitats and hence 
in, in terrestrial habitats, and hence it allows for a moist surface for easy diffusion of, um, of gases in and out of the amphibian. Should I be generous? <laughs> I'm moving on. Yes, mommy, yeah. The thin and moist nature of the skin of the amphibian allows for the amphibian to undergo cutaneous respiration. That is, gases are able to, gases are able to pass through the skin into the amphibian and also gases such as carbon dioxide are able to pass out of the body of the amphibian into the atmosphere, thus allowing the amphibian to perform gaseous exchange cutaneously. All right, I'm accepting that one. The reason why I accepted that is because you mentioned respiration, right? What is the purpose of the exchange of gases but to permit for respiration? Right? Biology consultants. Okay. What name is given to a water body that is saltier than fresh? Yes, Darius. Brackish water. You are right. Next, state two changes that occur in the human body during acclimatization. All right, mommy, yeah. So the human body produces more red blood cells in order to maximize the efficiency of oxygen transportation to all necessary parts of the body. Also, there is an increased heart rate, so that more blood would flow to all necessary parts of the body, thus ensuring that all necessary parts of the body have sufficient oxygen. I am not accepting that. No one else rang. Oh, I didn't finish. During acclimatization to high altitude. <laughs> All right. Yes, you see, this is speed race, so everything must be perfect, right? I was asking for two of them. Your first one was right. Additional red blood cells are produced. Other things that could happen. Number of capillaries increase in muscle tissues. The lungs increase slightly in size. There is a small increase in the size of the right ventricle of the heart, which is the heart chamber that pumps blood to the lungs. So you see acclimatization is talking about a longer term and not just the immediate, which is heart rate increasing, okay? So you needed two of these, and you had one. All right. Next set, 30 seconds. Find the greatest value and the least value of the absolute value of the expression 6 multiplying sine of x minus 5. Yes, upon... The least value is zero, and the greatest value is 11. You are right. <laughs> Next one. Solve the compound inequality. 
16 less than x squared less than 36. Yes, mommy, yeah. X is such that X belongs to the set of all real numbers where 4 less than X less than 6 or negative 6 less than X less than negative 4. You are right. <laughs> one solve for x from the equation log to the base 4 of x minus 4 multiplying log to the base x of 4 is equal to 3 yes upon x is equal to 1 over 4 or x is equal to 2 156. You are right. And 30 seconds. Find the nucleon number density of thallium 205, given that the value of the nuclear charge radius parameter is 1.2 femtometers. Yes. Seven point one picometers. That seems correct. <laughs> yes, Alexander. Two point three times ten to an exponent of seventeen kilogram per meter cubed. That's incorrect. <laughs> All right. 0. Point, the answer is 0. 0.14 per femtometer cubed. Next one, 10 seconds. In a long haul optical communication networks, Optical pulses representing data packet bits are observed to broaden with transmission distance over a single mode optical fiber. What is the principal physical property of optical fiber? Total internal reflection. No. Yes, go ahead. Alexander? Refraction. No. I continue. That gives rise to this observation. The right answer is chromatic dispersion. I would have accepted dispersion. Okay, 10 seconds. What is the exact value of the elementary charge? Yes. 1.602 by 10 raised to the power negative 19 coulombs. That's incorrect. That's an approximation. 
the exact value is 1.602176634 times 10 raised to the power negative 19 coulomb. Last set of questions. Yes, mommy, yeah. yeah. Zero point five zero point five zero and the unit is mole to the power of negative one dm to the power of three. That's incorrect. Yes, Alexander. Five by ten to an exponent of one. More to the power negative one. Decimeter to the power three. You are right. The systematic name of the most stable saturated isomer of the alcohol with molecular formula C5H10O. Yes, Darius. We have three. It's gone. <laughs> Did anybody else ring? Okay, go ahead, Alexander. Cyclopentanol. Again? Cyclopentanol. No. So I continue. Formula C5H10O, which cannot be oxidized by potassium dichromate. The right answer is one methyl cyclobutanol. Last question of the round. Manganese 2 hydroxide is a sparingly soluble salt with solubility product 4.00 times 10 raised to the power negative 12. A student dissolves a sample of solid manganese hydroxide in water to produce a saturated solution, calculate the mass of sample that must be dissolved to form 50.0 centimeter cubed saturated solution. Yes. Asada. The mass is 4.45 by 10 raised to an exponent of negative, of negative Negative one grams. That's incorrect. I continue. Did anyone else ring? Okay. At 25 degrees Celsius, atomic mass for manganese is 55.0. Yes, upon? 0 0.445. Milligrams. You are right. <laughs> and that's the end of the speed race. Before I announce the scores, we have a protest. 
from Ghana National College. This is in respect of the biology question, the first one. So let me repeat the question for your reminder. A group of biology students on a field trip came across an organism which they tried to classify as either reptile or amphibian. They agreed that the organism was an amphibian because it possessed a very moist, thin skin, which is, defi which is a defining characteristic of amphibians. What is the purpose of this defining characteristic to amphibians? Okay. So, you were first to attempt it, right? And they told me, gaseous exchange. And now the protest is that gaseous exchange is equivalent to external respiration. You see the description we got from Wesley Girls. You yourself, you, you saw the difference. Well, did, you, did you see the difference in explanation? Aha, uh -huh. that's its equivalent. Yes, it's gaseous exchange, but to what purpose? That is what the question was. It is the, for the purpose of respiration. Anyway, consultant says respiration is not just gaseous exchange. Moreover, Wesley Girls High School went up on about oxygen passing through the skin to the animal and CO2 coming out. So there was a better explanation from Wesley Girls, actually. Yes. So are we upholding this protest? Of course not. We will not uphold it. Second round, here are the scores. Wesley Girls High School has 22 points. <laughs> Ghana National College has 25 points. Augustine's College has 31 points. <laughs> round three. In this round, we have the problem of the day. The problem of the day is a single question to all three schools. From the time I ask you to begin, you will have four minutes in which you can present your answer on the screen behind you. The problem of the day is worth 10 points. Please rise, drop your pens, and now you may pick up the sheets so that we can read the problem of the day together. Problem of the day. The function f of x is defined by f of x is equal to 6x cubed plus kx squared plus x minus 2, where k is a constant. First one, a. If the expression x plus 2 is a factor of f of x, find the value of k. b. Using the value of k, completely factorize f of x. And c, find values of constants a, b, and c such that 1 over f of x is equal to a over the expression x plus 2 plus b over the expression 3x minus 1 plus c over the expression 2x plus 1. Contestants, this is your problem of the day. You may now begin.
The contestants have presented their answers before I award the points. Let's consider the solution or the suggested solution from the consultant. All right, so this is a problem from mathematics. We have a function f of x, which is defined by f of x is equal to 6x cubed plus kx squared plus x minus 2, where k is a constant. First thing contestants were to do was to consider that if x plus 1 is a factor of f of x, they were to evaluate the val uh, uh, k. They were to find the value of k. So this is how you tackle this one. If x plus 2 is a factor, then f of negative 2 will have to be equal to 0. So you substitute negative 2 for x, and then you do the evaluation. You see k remaining as a, uh, the only parameter that we don't know. And so uh, you have negative 48 plus 4k minus 2 minus 2 is equal to 4k minus 52 is equal to 0. And so you simply solve for k and you get k to be 13. This is worth two points. B, there was to use the value of k to completely factorize f of x. How do you go about this? So you, you insert the value of k into the um, function. You get 6x cubed plus 13x squared plus x minus 2. And this is equal to, you have x plus 2 as a factor. And if you factorize out, you will get 6x squared plus ax minus 1 as the other factor. But this is not a complete factorization, so you have to continue. Um, for x squared, if 13, uh, if for x squared, 13 is equal to 12 plus a, and so a will have to be uh, 1. And we have evaluated it, and so we'll wind up with 6x squared plus x minus 1, and we can easily, quickly factorize this one to 3x minus 1, multiplying the expression 2x plus 1. So f of x really is x plus 2 multiplying the expression 3x minus 1 multiplying the expression 2x plus 1. If you get this far, you get three more points. All right. Then for C, contestants were to find the values of constants a, b, and c such that 1 over f of x is equal to a over x plus 2 plus b over the expression 3x minus 1 plus c over the expression 2x plus 1. In fact, if you had been paying attention, it would have been so easy to do this factorization just by observation of the question because <laughs> consultants had already factorized the whole thing for you in order for you to be able to do this partial fraction. Uh, so there was a major hint there. People spent way too much time going through the factorization when the hint was obvious. Anyway, in any case, so you set this equation up as a partial fractions uh, problem, and you have 1 over f of x is equal to this expression. And so 1 is equal to, we are basically getting rid of the denominator because they are common throughout, right? So it's equal to 1 is equal to a multiplying the expression 3x minus 1, multiplying the expression 2x plus 1, plus b multiplying the expression x plus 2, multiplying the expression 2x plus 1, plus c multiplying the expression x plus 2, multiplying the expression 3x minus 1. OK. So the previous part, for setting up the partial fractions, you will get one point. And then for getting this far, you get one more point. Now it's left to us to basically evaluate A, B, and C. And you do that by making sure that some of the terms vanish, right? You select values to make the terms vanish to make it easier for you to calculate. So first one, let x equals negative 2. If you do that, you'll see that many of the terms vanish, and you are left with 1 is equal to a multiplying negative 7, multiplying negative 3, and so a is 1 over 21, one point for this. Then you go and you set x is equal to negative half. If you do that, again, some terms vanish. In fact, all the terms in a and b will vanish, and you, left with, you are left with the terms in c. So you get 1 is equal to 
C multiplying 3 over 2, multiplying negative 5 over 2. And so you get uh, negative 15 C over 4. Uh, and this is equal to negative 15 C over 4. And so C is negative 4 over 15. Again, one point. Finally, you set X to one third. The other terms, apart from the ones in B, vanish. And so you now have 1 is equal to B multiplying 7 over 3, multiplying 5 over 3. And so you get 35. And this is equal to 35B over 9. And so B has to be B. 9 over 35. That is one more point, making a total of 10 points. This is a suggested solution from the consultant. I was really hoping for perfect scores everywhere today. I mean, I specifically selected this problem to get some perfect scores. Unfortunately, I didn't get that. Let's see what the contestants did. Ghana National College. They were able to calculate for k two points. Then they set up that f of x is equal to, you know, uh, yeah, they were able to factorize. Um, however, they set up to factorize. They went through the process, and something went wrong somewhere. Even the factor that was given to them, they threw it away and got a new factor. I, I, I really was surprised. So they refused to use the x plus 2 that was given to them as a factor, and they were working with x plus 3. Uh, I'm giving them one point because of my generosity and good heart. I'm giving you one point for the process, but the answer, obviously, is not right. Okay. Then they set up. They set up for uh, solving the partial fractions. Remember, the setting up was worth one point. So I'm giving you the one point for setting up, but in fact, everything else, your, you try to calculate for B. Your answer was incorrect. And then uh, you didn't have any values at all for A and C. And so at the end of the day, you have four out of 10. All right, Wesley Girls High School. You didn't have a problem with A or B, so that's five points. Unfortunately, you couldn't really do anything about the C. You didn't set up properly to get any points, and you didn't calculate for A, B, or C. And so I really can't help you much. That's all I can give you, five out of 10. <laughs> St. Augustine's College was able to do A and B. They went through the process for C, all the way up to calculating for the value of A. Unfortunately, there wasn't enough time because they didn't see the hint. I'm sure if you had seen the hint, you would have been faster. Unfortunately, you didn't see the hint, so you were doing everything long, and so uh, you were not able to get a value for C, neither were you able to get a value for B. And so you wind up with eight out of 10. <laughs> the problem of the day and the end of round three. Before we begin the next round, we have a couple of substitutions. <laughs> Wesley Girls High School. Asada, it's been a pleasure. Best wishes to you. 
and in comes the day. You are welcome, Dede. St. Augustine's College is also effecting a substitution. Opong, it's been a pleasure. Best wishes to you. And in comes Nana Benyi. Time out. Time out. <laughs> Round four. This is the Jupe true or false round. Our stake in the round is the Jupe money transfer $20 promo. During this National Science and Math Quiz season, whenever alumni abroad send money to Ghana using their school's exclusive promo code, Jupe rewards the school with $20 US dollars for developmental projects in the school. For this particular contest, St. Augustine's College's promo code is Augusto. <laughs> Wesley Girls High School's is Wegehe. And Ghana National College is National. The true or false round is proudly sponsored by Jupe Money Transfer. Meet a need, send by Jupe. All right. So, contestants, in this round, I'm going to be presenting you with statements. When you receive a statement, please let me know whether it's true or false. If you are right, two points. If you are incorrect, you lose a precious point. You may choose not to respond, in which case that statement becomes available to the two remaining schools. A school may ring and attempt an answer. If right, there are two full points. If it's wrong, there's that penalty, one point. Every once in a while, we have one of those statements that require about 30 seconds of time. If that's the case, I will let you know. If there's nothing of the sort, then you have 10 seconds in which to present your answers. I hope that's all right. Okay, first set of statements. Ghana National College. The immune system is responsible for the removal of worn out cells. Darius. True. Yes. <laughs> Wesley Girls. The immune system is responsible for the transport of substances from one cell to another. Did they? False. Yes. <laughs> the immune system identifies and destroys abnormal cells. Alexander? True. Yes. For the next set, I have a preamble to all schools. Preamble. If f of x is differentiable on the interval 0 less than or equal to x less than or equal to a, then did you get the preamble? OK. If f of x is differentiable on the interval 0 less than or equal to x less than or equal to a, then Ghana National, integral from 0 to A of df dx dx is equal to f of A minus 0. Oh. 
Foes. You are right. With the same preamble, integral from zero to a of df dx dx is equal to the expression f of a plus f of zero, all of this over two. Did they? False. You're right. With the same preamble, the integral from zero to a of df dx dx is equal to f of a plus f of zero. Yes, Alexander? False. You're right. <laughs> Triglycerides undergo acidic hydrolysis to produce free fatty acids and glycerol. Darius? True. Yes. In alkaline hydrolysis of triglycerides, fatty acids formed are neutralized to produce a salt and glycerol. Did they? Two. Yes. During a saponification reaction, one mole of sodium hydroxide produces one mole of fatty acid sodium salts. Nana Benyi? True. Yes. Next set, preamble to all schools, preamble. A conical tube inclined at 45 degrees to the horizontal has a radius of 20 centimeter at its lower end and a radius of 40 centimeters at its upper end. An incompressible fluid is pumped into the tube at the lower end. That's a preamble. A conical tube inclined at 45 degrees to the horizontal has a radius of 20 centimeters at its lower end and a radius of 40 centimeters at its upper end. An incompressible fluid is pumped into the tube at the lower end. Ghana National College. The fluid speed at the upper end of the tube is four times the fluid speed at the lower end. Darius. False. Yes. <laughs> the fluid speed at the upper end of the tube is half the fluid speed at the lower end. Mamiya. False. You're right. Fluid pressure at the upper end only depends on the height of the upper end of the tube relative to its lower end. Alexander? False. Yes. <laughs> Preamble to all schools. Indicate whether the given statement are true or false with respect to being factors that influence totipotency. Did you get your preamble? Indicate whether the given statements are true or false with respect to being factors that influence totipotency. All right. So, uh, Ghana National College, non-reduced nitrogen. Darius? False. No. So true. 
relative humidity. Mamiya, yeah. false. No. <laughs> Source of explant. Alexander? True. No. Next set, 30 seconds. This is one of those that you get 30 seconds for. And I have a preamble to all schools. Preamble. Expressed as a difference of two squares. That's a preamble. Expressed as a difference of two squares. Ghana National. 77 is equal to 38 squared minus 37 squared. Darius? False. You're right. <laughs> 37 is equal to 17 squared minus 16 squared. Did they? False. You're right. 97 is equal to 49 squared minus 48 squared. Nana Benyi? True. Yes. Ghana National. During protein synthesis, the carboxyl group of one amino acid reacts with the amino group of another amino acid to form a peptide bond. Darius. True. Yes. The primary structure of a protein refers to its shape and orientation, which is primarily held by hydrogen bonds. Did they? False. Yes. <laughs> Denaturation of a protein involves the breaking of peptide bonds and leads to loss of the primary structure. Alexander? False. Yes. <laughs> Last set of statements for the round. Preamble to all schools. Preamble. Two small loudspeakers, one meter apart, point in the same direction and emit the same note. Please, did you get your preamble? Two small loudspeakers, one meter apart, point in the same direction and emit the same note. All right, Ghana National College. The air displacement field at a point in front of the pair of loudspeakers is a linear superposition of the air displacement field each loudspeaker separately produces. Darius? False. No, that's a true statement. <laughs> Wesley Girls, with the same preamble. The sound intensity at a point in front of the pair of loudspeakers is a linear superposition of the sound intensity each loudspeaker separately Producers. Yes, did they? Two. No. Last 
statement with the same preamble. The sound intensity at a point in front of the pair of loudspeakers is unrelated to the sound intensity each loudspeaker separately produces. Alexander? False. You are right. <laughs> Okay, so those of you, those of you who have been following the semi-final contest, did you notice that the last set of statements in each of the three semi-finals was about superposition? So we had cases of linear superposition and cases of non-linear superposition. Are we now convinced that there is a difference? Okay, as long as we are learning, I'm happy. That's the end of the fourth round. The end of the fourth round. Wesley Girls High School has 37 points. Ghana National College has 39 points. St. Augustine's College has 52 points. Yes, we've got to the goal super bonanza. If any school solves all four riddles, 2,400 Ghana CDs, a school that solves three of the four gets 2,000 Ghana CDs. If you solve two out of the four, you get 1,200 Ghana CDs. And if you solve even one riddle, you get 600 Ghana CDs. Goal Super Bonanza is proudly sponsored by Goal Good Energy. So, we are going to be solving riddles. There are four of them. I'm going to be reading out the clues. When you are ready to solve a riddle, you must ring for it. May I hear your bell, Ghana National? Thank you. Yours, Wesley Girls. Thank you. And your St. Augustine's College. If you solve the riddle on the first clue, five points. On the second clue, four points. On the third or any clue thereafter, three points. Best wishes to all three schools. First riddle. I am an inorganic compound consisting of a metal in a plus five oxidation state. I am an orange red crystalline solid. I am a key catalyst in the contact process. Yes, Darius. Vanadium five oxide. You are right. I was reading the third clue, three points. Next one. We are one of the ligaments of the vertebral arches. We interconnect adjacent transverse processes in the thoracic spine and adjacent accessory processes in the lumbar spine. 
In the cervical region, we consist of a few irregular fibers that are largely replaced by the intertransversari. In the thoracic region, we are rounded cords intimately connected with the deep muscles of the back. In the lumbar region, we are thin and membranous. We are weak, sheet-like ligaments that act to limit lateral flexion and rotation of the spine. Yes, they did. Suspensory ligaments. Suspensory ligaments. No. Did anyone else ring? Okay, so who are we? Yes, Darius. Intervertebral ligaments. Pardon? Intervertebral ligaments. No. You ran. Articular yes. ligaments. No. Anyone? Yes, you up there. Pardon? How? <laughs> the right answer is the intertransverse ligaments. All right, next one. I am a named law in physics. I am a law of optics. In my usual form, I am reminiscent of the Pythagorean theorem for a right angle triangle whose hypotenuse has unit length. I explain why a Polaroid transmits. Yes. Malus's law. You are right. Reading the fourth clue, three points. Last riddle. I am a special point on a curve. For a continuous curve, you will find me between two adjacent stationary points. Point of inflection. You are right. And that was, that was the second clue, four points. Four points. And that's the end of the fifth round. Thank you so much for joining us for this last semi-final contest. Before I announce the final scores, I would like to acknowledge our sponsors. The National Science and Math Quiz is proudly sponsored by the Ghana Education Service in partnership with Gold PLC and supported by Joy News, Pep Student, Jupe Money Transfer, Prudential Life Insurance Ghana, Beta Malt, ALX, Kivo, Bell Beverages, Flora Tissues, Coronation Insurance, Accra College of Medicine, University of Mines and Technology, Academic City University College, PMMC Jewelry, GTP, CHAS, YFM, and Girlmark Foundation. The 2024 edition of the STEM Festival will come off from the 7th to the 23rd of November 2024. Join us as we delve into the theme, Exploring Agritech Solutions to Boost Ghana's Economy. Now, the final scores. At the end of the contest, Wesley Girls High School has 37 points. National 
National College has 49 points. St. Augustine's College has 52 points. Wesley Girls High School, thanks so much for being here. You've done well to get to the semifinals. All the best to you. Ghana National College, thank you for giving us a good contest. Well done. Well done. Unfortunately, we have to say goodbye. Best wishes to you. St. Augustine's College. Congratulations on winning the contest. Very well done. You have booked a place in the grand finale. I look forward to seeing you. Best wishes to you. I do have a couple of other announcements to make though. Ghana National College, you solved three of the riddles. And for that, you are getting 2,000 Ghana CDs in the Super Bonanza. Well done. All right. We also have the Pepsodent Higher Scorer Award, sponsored by Pepsodent, Every Smile Matters. At this stage of competition, it's worth 5,000 Ghana CDs. Unfortunately, it didn't take place in this contest. Your score is not high enough for that, so it didn't come here, but that is also at stake. Thank you so much. All right. Last announcement. Please join the fan with our National Science and Math Quiz Review Show for highlights from today's contest. Tune in every evening for insights and analysis. Viewers, thank you so much once again for joining us for all of these semi-final contests. We have one contest left, the grand finale, and I doubt that you want to miss out on that, so I look forward to seeing you there. My name is Elsie F. Hoffman, and I have been your quiz mistress. This has been a prime time production. Thank you, and see you at the grand finale. Bye. Anthem. Hello. 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 We are doing the college anthem. We are all stretching our hands forward. Mo Augustinian World Sony Papa. Ready? Go! Papa, no crown and the son of Sabe. in the final stage. Yes. Now, what are you expecting from your school? Expect, expect nothing. Expect nothing but the best from our quiz boys. 